There are so many daily and weekly activities in Final Fantasy XIV, it can be really hard for new players knowing which ones are worth doing and whether you missed anything important. So in this video, I want to go over some that I would highly recommend you do, tell you exactly why I think you should do them and give you some tips to optimize them along the way. There is some cringe nitpicking min-maxing in this video and I get that it's not for everyone, but this is for those of you who are interested in some advice that I gathered over the years. First, I want to talk about treasure maps. All gathering jobs have a chance to find a time-worn map at a resource node level 40 and above, which will lead them to a buried treasure should they choose to decipher that map. You can get various expensive loot here, especially from the 8-player maps, which sell for lots of gil on the market board. The problem is that every player can only gather one of these every 18 hours, so any player short on gil who have a gatherer can easily make 50,000 gil or more per day by gathering a treasure map. And doing so only takes a few minutes. As a quick tip, I have the level 70, 80 and 90 8 player maps in my favorites on the market board so I can quickly check the prices and just gather the most valuable one by going to the respective nodes. Next up, ocean fishing. While it's technically not a daily capped activity, you can usually only catch a boat or two per day depending on your play time because the boats depart every two hours or so. Not only is ocean fishing the single best way to level your fisher from level 1 in the first place, but it also rewards you with lots of white gatherer scripts, even on mediocre runs. At the script exchanges, these can be used to buy various ingredients and baits that you can then sell on the market board. One example are these select bait balls, which are needed for the fishing relic in the current expansion. I have easily sold 50 or more stacks of these for 50 to 100,000 gil each. One bait ball only costs five gatherer scripts from the NPC in the Crystarium. A single ocean fishing trip gives me around 1,000 scripts, which means two full stacks of select bait balls, which would sell for around 150,000 gil at the moment. Outside of that, there are lots of titles, mounts, minions, and so on obtainable by doing the occasional ocean fishing trip. Next up, retainer ventures. I fully believe that most people are using them to make some gil already, at least I would hope so, but I think very few people are actually getting the most out of them. When sending your retainers on a venture, you have three options. The first one is job specific, and it will either be hunting, botany, mining, or fishing. These are a fantastic source of gil because you can use them to get items that are tedious to farm otherwise, and therefore worth a lot of gil on the market board. Many of these items are, however, pretty terrible and should be avoided at all costs. To save you the hassle of checking every single one of them manually, you can use the website TeamCraft where you can find a tab called Retainer Ventures in the Helpers category on the left. You just enter the job of your retainer, their level and your server and you'll get a list with recommended items to farm to maximize the amount of gil that you get. The other options for ventures are field explorations which take 18 hours and I exclusively use those to level my retainers. Once they're max level I never use these at all because the rewards are simply not worth it. The last option are quick explorations, which take an hour to complete and have a chance to drop a venture coffer. This can contain some expensive items such as dice, but the drop rates of the coffers are completely random. If you're feeling lucky, these are not a terrible option, but I generally prefer the guaranteed returns from sending my retainers to gather materials. Next up, supply missions. You can find these in your grand company headquarters. Essentially, you can turn in crafted items in return for a massive chunk of XP. These reset daily, and if you're one of the people who don't have their crafters and gatherers leveled yet, you're seriously missing out on a ton of XP every day by not taking advantage of these. Make sure to turn in a high quality item, as it will give you bonus XP. And at the very least, I recommend crafting the items with a star next to them, as those will yield additional XP on top of any HQ bonuses that you're already getting. However, once you're max level on the jobs, these are no longer worth doing for the tiny amount of seals that you get. Next up, hunt dailies and weeklies. In the capital cities and various other locations, you can find these hunt boards. These have daily and weekly marks, which is just a monster that you go out to hunt for gil and allied seals. Personally, I can only recommend the weekly one, as the daily ones simply take too long to be worth it. The seals are a great way, especially for beginners, to save gil, because at the hunt bill masters, these can be turned in for etherite tickets. If you only use these on teleports costing 1000 gil and above, which can be done in the teleportation screen by clicking this cogwheel, you will save at least 20,000 gil plus 5000 gil for completing the hunt in the first place. Another great source of allied seals is the Mass Carnival. This is a blue mage activity where you can complete trials. Three of these trials will be marked as a weekly target with a blue, silver and gold star. In total, you can get 550 allied seals, 18,000 gil and some poetics from doing these, and depending on how experienced you are on Blue Mage, it's only going to take about 15 minutes. 
if you use all of the allied seals on etherite tickets for teleports worth 1000 gil and above as we did before that comes out to 110,000 gil per week so realistically between the hunt weeklies and the mass carnival you'll probably never have to pay for another teleport again there are even more tips to come but i want to take a moment to talk about the sponsors of today's video tokyo treat and sakura co both of these companies deliver boxes full of Japanese snacks to you, allowing you to experience Japan from the comfort of your own home. The box from Tokyo Treat contains 20 exclusive seasonal snacks that are only available in Japan. The Sakura Ko box contains snacks that support local Japanese snack makers and focuses on traditional and artisan Japanese snacks. Each box has a monthly theme and comes with a booklet containing information about the snacks and various interesting facts about Japanese culture. This month's Tokyo Treat box came packed with snacks inspired by Japan's New Year's holiday, and the Sakura Ko box on the other hand came with a theme of celebrating New Year's in Hiroshima. One of my favorite items inside the Tokyo Treat box were these curry crackers and the jerky with eel flavor, which I've never had before. From the Sakura Ko box, my favorite was this fish-shaped treat, which tasted doughy and contained red bean paste. I personally love the idea behind these boxes, because outside of going to Japan yourself, it's really hard to get your hands on any of these. So if you want to get your own box or send it to someone else as a gift, please use the links in the description as well as the code Jolson for $5 off your first Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat box. Every purchase of a box will directly support the channel with a commission. Thank you to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video and let's get back to Final Fantasy XIV. Back at the Grand Company headquarters, let's talk about your squadron missions. These allow you to command your squadron, which you will unlock or will have unlocked at some point in your Grand Company. You can find them in the back rooms of the headquarters if you do have them. Talk to your sergeant and send out your squadron to level them up over time. Once they're at a sufficiently high level, you can send them out on their weekly priority mission. These will give you various rewards that are actually super useful. For example, there's the Gold Saucer VIP card. This will give you a buff granting you an additional 15% MGP. This might not sound like a lot, but if you use this on a weekend to complete some gold source activities, this can easily result in an additional 15,000 to 20,000 MGP. And remember that you get 10 of these buffs for one priority mission, each one lasting 120 minutes. Do note that any FC buffs of the same type are going to override these, so take a look at what your FC is using before activating them. Next up, let's talk about duty roulettes. Most of you will already be aware that these are a great source of experience in tombstones, so I don't want to spend too much time on these. However, there's one thing that is really worth highlighting. Frontline roulette is perhaps the most underrated of the bunch among new players. It's a great way to level because it gives you a ton of experience and actually lets you play a different job than the one that you do want to level because you can freely swap between the mods you're in duty. This also gives you progress for your PvP series, unlocking mounts, emotes, and even more. It took me a while of playing the game to realize how much I was missing out on not doing the frontline roulette. Next up, I want to talk about the gold saucer for a bit. Here you can farm a currency called MGP in return for various rewards such as mounts and minions. I won't go into too much detail here because I made an entire video about farming MGP a while ago, but the one thing that I would make sure you do every week is the fashion report. This will give you 60,000 MGP for just a few minutes of work. There's a Twitter account which posts the weekly fashion report items that you need to wear to get your MGP making this one of the best ways to farm the currency fairly passively over time. Next up, Wondrous Tales. In Idleshire, you can find Chloe Aliapo, who will give you a journal once per week. These are like activity stamps, where doing an activity will mark it as complete. After placing nine stamps, you get rewards based on how many lines of stamps you created. Often you can complete multiple of these just by playing the game the way you usually would because there's some generic activities in there, such as dungeons or PvP. Just make sure to pick this up at the start of the week and then fill out the remaining stamps needed by doing extreme trials in unrestricted mode, which should only take a few seconds for each one of them. You can then use your second chances to mark that activity as incomplete and simply do it again to get another stamp. Doing that will only take a few minutes total and will allow you to complete the rest of the journal. The rewards that you can get here are worth the time spent completing the journal every week, even if you've already unlocked all of them, which is fairly unlikely. That's because many of them are tradable, and things like the mounts can go for 10 million gil or more on the market board. Next up, custom deliveries. I've talked about these in my crafter leveling video already as a way to get scripts and experience. Even if you have your crafters and gatherers maxed out already, these are a great source of gil. Basically, you can turn in various crafted or gathered collectibles once per week, in return for white and purple scripts. The material needed for the craft, should you choose to do it as a crafter, are purchased from vendors nearby, making this a very easy and quick to complete activity. 
The scripts can be used to buy various materials needed for crafts at the script exchange. Right now the market for these isn't really there because we're at the end of the expansion, but there will eventually be new materials that crafters need. And during those times you can make hundreds of thousands of gil just from completing your weekly custom delivery. One tip that I have for getting the most scripts possible is looking for clients offering a bonus on a collectible of a certain type. You can find a list of clients and the items that they need in the timers page, which you can find in the duty category down here. Another easy way to make some gil every week is the Dolmen Enclave. Once you unlock it, you can turn in items at this donation basket that is super close to the etherite. Now I know it says donation basket, but they actually give you gil in return. And actually they pay a pretty high price for it too. I'm not sure how this works exactly, but I'm not gonna complain. So this way you can get up to 40,000 gil per week, meaning you need to turn in items worth at least 20,000 gil at a rate of 200%. One item that I love to turn in are the demi materials found all throughout the game, because their values are nice even numbers. And even if you don't have any of these laying around, you can probably find them on the market board at close to or even below vendor prices. And then just resell them at the Dome and Enclave for profit. Next up are leave allowances. You might not have noticed that if you're a beginner, but you have a weekly limit of allowances for leave quests. These can be found in your journal right here. Every 12 hours you'll get three allowances up to the maximum of 100. That means that roughly every two weeks you have 100 leave allowances to spend. Now this may be the most tedious of optimizations we're going to talk about, but you can use these allowances to complete a level 88 culinarian leaf quest called the Mountain Steeped. For this, you'll need to turn in three cups of Tsai Tu Vunu, a simple crafted item. You can either craft this yourself or buy it for cheap on the market board. Every turn in of three items at high quality will give you 10,000 gil, meaning that this can make you 1 million gil every two weeks. Accepting and turning in the quest repeatedly is quite tedious though, so use at your own risk. This is what I'd recommend to all of those people who don't care to spend too much time making gil, but still want to buy the crafted gear sets whenever it's time to raid again. Eight months between the raid tiers is plenty of time to make gil this way and still be able to easily afford the sets as well as the pentamills. Now lastly on this list, and some of you might be surprised by this, Island Sanctuary. I know many people stop doing the Island Sanctuary workshop when they reach max level, including me for some time. However, I think that those who keep farming cowries will actually be able to make quite a bit of gill in the long run. That's because the seafarer's cowries can be used to buy crafter and gatherer materia. Now, right now we're in a bit of a slump, so the materia isn't worth a whole lot. However, during patches with new crafted gear, these are always in high demand. My hope is that Dawn Trail will add the new tiers of materia to the vendor, which will allow you to spend all of your cowries on them to sell on the market board. Even if Materia 11 and 12 aren't added here, the lower level versions will still be used in Pentamels, however. And from what I've seen in the past, these might actually temporarily be worth more. Depending on the prices of Materia, which I've seen spike as high as 20,000 gil each, every week of Island Sanctuary could be worth between 100 and 300,000 gil next expansion, but you're playing a patient waiting game until then. Now, I realize this was a huge info dump, but I think it's going to be interesting for a lot of you. So thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.